Hi, I'm Arnaut. In today's lesson, which forms part of our series of lessons on space and shape geometry, I want to show you how knowing the congruence axioms makes us more powerful as mathematicians because it enables us to solve interesting problems. Geometry is that branch of mathematics which is concerned with our physical world. It's concerned with the measurement, properties and relationships of points, lines, angles, surfaces and solids. Over the last few lessons we've developed what are known as the congruence axioms. In this lesson I want to show you how powerful those axioms make us. Before we do so, let's cross to Asanda and find out what questions the students with her have for us today. Hey guys, welcome to the Learning Channel Studios in Auckland Park and what we've done is taken three of the top students at five of our top schools, invited them here and we are ready to get down to work. Lots of work to be done, lots of fun to be had and hey, my friends have only got one thing to say. Welcome to the Learning Channel! <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, sorry we're just messing around. Guys, welcome back and in today's lesson we're going to be looking at congruent axioms 3 and you know I'm hanging out with the guys from Florida Park High School. How are you doing? I'm doing great man. Oh, awesome. Okay, we're going to figure this out later, right? Okay. Great, let's switch that off. Super stuff. Now, tell me, are you confident? Confident. Are you feeling good about this? I'm feeling good about are this. Are you going to ask your next question? Yes, I am. Congruent axioms to solve problems. That is quite interesting, isn't it? What kinds of problems are these? Are not. What we're talking about are mathematical problems. Now, before trying to solve any of these, let me link what we're doing to the curriculum. Space and shape, more formally referred to as geometry, is the study of our physical world. It is concerned with describing characteristics of and relationships between shapes and objects, or figures and solids, in different positions and orientations in the world. It is also concerned with the movement of these shapes and objects between different positions. In today's lesson, we are going to use the congruence axioms to solve problems. In our last lesson, we established what congruence is in general. We said that two figures are said to be congruent if they have the same size and shape. We said, the figures can be turned into one another by means of a translation, a rotation, or a reflection. And we have shown that there are four different ways in which we can show that two triangles are congruent. The first of those was a case we called side, side, side. We said that two triangles are congruent if the three sides of one triangle are equal to the three sides of the other triangle. The next case we called side angle side. We said that two triangles are congruent if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are equal to two sides and the included angle of the other triangle. Then there was a case called right angle hypotenuse side. We said that two triangles are congruent if the hypotenuse and one side of a right angle triangle are equal to the hypotenuse and one side of the other right angle triangle. And finally, there was the case of angle-angle corresponding side. We said that two triangles are congruent if two angles and one side of one triangle are equal to two angles and the corresponding side of the other triangle. Having established these axioms, we're now ready to use them to solve problems. There are typically two or three different kinds of problems that we solve with them, and I'd like to introduce you to those problems one by one. We've been given a figure triangle A, B, C, with altitude A, D, and we've been told that A, B is equal to A, C. Now, we've been asked to prove that A, D, this line here, bisects B, A, C. 
In order to solve problems like this, I recommend that you have a large number of colored cookies or crayons with you. I'm going to make a little mark there to indicate that I'm trying to prove that those two angles are equal. AD bisects BAC means that it cuts the angle into two equal pieces. I'd like to conclude that those two angles are equal. How to do so? Well, we've been working with congruency and there's quite obviously two different triangles here. There's a triangle A, B, D and another triangle A, D, C. In the blue triangle we know that there's a line called AB and in the green triangle we know that there's a line called AC and that those two lines are equal. Now we've also been told that this angle here is a right angle. Because the two angles next to each other make a straight line, that angle should also be a right angle. That gives us two triangles in which we know a side and a side and a right angle and a right angle. I need a third bit of information. Oh yes, this side AD is common. Let me show you how we now set out our work. We're going to say in triangle ABD and triangle, and I'm going to take care to name the uh, angles in the corresponding order ACD, going from A to C along the equal line ending up at the right angle AC. D. We're trying to prove that those two triangles are congruent because if we've shown that those two triangles are congruent then the missing parts are equal and in particular those two missing parts will be equal. To show that two triangles are congruent we need three different things. First of all we know that AB is equal to AC. The second thing we know is that the line AD is common. It's a member of both triangles. The third thing that we know is that angle ADB is equal to angle ADC is equal to 90 degrees. Well from that we now know that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD the reason is right angle hypotenuse side. We prove these two triangles are equal for a reason. We wanted to show that BAD was equal to CAD. If we look here we see that that's angle A and angle A. In other words this implies that angle BAD is equal to angle C. A, D, and therefore A, D bisects B, A, C.